Hey, what's up everybody? Too Tall Toby here, and in today's SolidWorks Sheet Metal quick tip, we're gonna talk about how to create rolled parts like cones. So you can see here that I've got this cone shape, and we can go into the flatten command. We can see what this thing might look like in a flat pattern, and of course we can turn it back into a formed shape. This is a really common question that we see in the world of sheet metal, and there's actually several different ways you could do this. You could maybe do it with a loft. You could do it with a... Um, uh, you could probably even do it with an extrude and a shell, uh, but today I'm just going to show you the most straightforward, the simplest way to create cones and flatten them. And then if you want to know more about this topic, let me know down in the comments. I'm happy to create some additional sheet metal videos. Of course, if you're just getting started with your sheet metal journey and you want to take some training with me, we do have an upcoming sheet metal training class. It's uh, three half days with me. You actually get to ask me questions back and forth and we get to teach you all about the wonderful world of sheet metal and I'll include information information about that training class down below in the description, but it is certainly a great way to get up to speed in the world of sheet metal. So when it comes to parts that are going to be rolled like this part here, one thing that's important to know is that there's a really simple way to do this when it's a uh, straight cylinder, and that is to simply begin a new sketch and then create what's called a center point arc. So we start over here exactly at 90 degrees, and then we just come around with this arc until it's almost at 360 degrees, something like this. And then from your sheet metal tools, you can jump right into the base flange tab command. So you can take this shape, this kind of a partial circular, shape and choose base flange tab and boom there you go you got yourself a rolled part so very simple when it's just a cylinder you can just sketch a partial circle and then you can use the sheet metal base flange tab command to turn that into a sheet metal part and yes this can be flattened and of course you could also select on this edge here and then launch a command like edge flange you can do downstream sheet metal commands to this shape so if that's all you're looking for good job hit the like button and you can stop the video but if you're looking to learn more about cones then what you need to know is that it's not quite that easy with a cone because you're not going to extrude a cone using that workflow and so instead what we need to do is we need to create that geometry and create some kind of a break in that geometry now one way that we could do that would be to just do it with a cut extrude and so again if this was a cylinder that process might look something like this we could create the od for the sheet metal we could create the id for the sheet metal cylindrical kind of tube shape we could go features extrude turn this into a boss extrude like so and then we could go to the top plane, begin a sketch, orient our view, and we could create a kind of wedge shape. So you create a shape that comes over here um, and then kind of comes back to the center. That way, both of these edges of the wedge are running normal to the sheet metal material. That's always useful when this is perpendicular to the sheet metal material. So now we could go to the command features extruded cut, and we could do an extrude cut here that rips through that entire tube. And then what we can do is we can click on this edge here and we can launch the old school sheet metal command, insert bends, insert bends. So first you pick on this linear edge here and then you do insert bends. Now, normally in the insert bends command, what you do is you pick a planar face and then you convert the rest of the solid geometry to become sheet metal. We convert this geometry over here, which is currently just solid geometry. We convert that into sheet metal. But... This time we don't have a planar face or at least not an appropriate planar face. So we just pick a linear edge. So you pick that linear edge there, you choose insert bends. And then once you choose insert bends, you can see over here, this is asking for a face normally, but you could also pick an edge and you can hit the green check mark here. And once you do, you can click flatten and boom. You did it. You converted that solid shape into a sheet metal shape. And that's another way that you can take a cylinder and turn it into a sheet metal. Well, we can do the same idea, but instead we can revolve a cone. And when we do the revolve, we could just revolve it short, like maybe 358 degrees or 359 degrees. So if I choose the command new, I'm gonna make this out of millimeters using plain carbon steel, front plane, begin a sketch, S key, center line. I'm gonna make a center line that just kind of comes up here like so. And then what I'm gonna do, whoops, let's make sure that's vertical. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a, a rectangle. This is kind of an exotic rectangle here, this three point corner rectangle. But because we're revolving a cone for a sheet metal cone, this is probably gonna be the best solution. So I'm gonna choose to create this like so. I'll come down here. Maybe I'll come down to a distance of, let's say 180. And then I'll come over this direction at a distance of say, let's say four millimeters. We'll make this thing four millimeters thick. 
And then I'll take the lowest point on this rectangle, hold control, pick the origin, let go of control, make that horizontal. And then I will begin the smart dimension command and create a dimension here to kind of the OD of the cone. And then I'm going to click on the center line here that we sketched earlier, and I'm going to cross over that center line, cross over that center line. And what that does is it gives you a doubled dimension for that OD. So let's say we make this 500 millimeters, kind of a larger, you know, half meter cone here that we're going to be manufacturing. Maybe, maybe we're only making a few of these, but we're going to roll them by hand. And uh, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a dimension here that goes from this angled line to the center line. Now, because I picked the center line a moment ago, it remains selected. But just to kind of show you the full workflow, I'm going to press escape here. S key, smart dimension, pick this angled line, and then I'm going to pick this center line. And then what I'm going to do here, see when I cross over, it doesn't give me the doubled dimension. I'm going to hold shift on my keyboard. And that way, when I cross over, I get that doubled dimension. So we're going to bring in this doubled dimension here. We'll make that 45 degrees for that cone angle, uh, total angle, so 22.5 degrees per side. And now we are ready to jump into the command features revolve. So if you're, if you're following along with me here, uh, this is what that sketch should look like. Try and get that sketch to look something like this. And then we can go to the command features revolve. And once we go to the command features revolve, we're going to come over here and we're just going to decrease this value a little bit. And that'll save us from having to go back in and like cut that wedge in like we did in the previous example. So I'll bump this down to 358 degrees, hit the green check mark, and there we go. There is our revolve shape. Now, just like we did in the previous example, we can click on this edge here and then we can go to the command sheet metal and then we can use this command here. It's kind of an old school command, insert bends. So we go sheet metal, insert bends. You pick that edge, that linear edge, sheet metal, insert bends. And once we do that, we can put in a, a bend radius. This doesn't really matter for this bend, but if we're going to put an additional bend on this thing, then that angle should be whatever the tool is that you have. So like I showed before, if we're going to add an edge flange here, like so, like a little edge flange sticking out here, then that edge flange is going to have a bend radius of 5 uh, millimeters, five millimeters bend radius for all the future bends that we add to this thing. So we're going to hit the green check mark and now we can choose the command flatten and oh yeah, there is our flattened cone. If you needed to add any geometry to that cone in the flattened state, what you could do is you could choose unfold, unfold right here, unfold. And then what you can do is you can click here where it says fixed face. So you could click right here, fixed face, and then bends to collect. You, you say collect all bends and you hit the green check mark. And now what will happen is any geometry that you put on this thing, like let's say we put a hole here at uh, 50 millimeters and we put a hole here at 50 millimeters and then S key extrude cut. And I'll just use the option here, link to thickness, hit the green check mark. So now those holes are cut here in the tree we had the the cone formed we unfolded it we cut those holes and so now we use the command fold up here in this toolbar fold and when you use the command fold you can say collect all bends and hit the green check mark and boom there you go now you were able to take those cuts and fold them back up and so now you've got like a little a little tool to align that geometry while you're rolling it <laughs> a little big big tool to align that geometry while you're rolling probably be a much smaller hole there for that application and then, of course, if this gap is too large, if you want that gap to be tightened up, well, what you would do is just go back to the Revolve feature, right? Mouse button, Edit Feature, and then maybe we'd make this like 359.5. Uh, you just need to have a slight gap there. If you get it too tight, then you might have these corners here overlapping, and then that might cause it to error. So just kind of be on the lookout for that. But you can certainly make that a little bit tighter to get that to be a properly closed cone, so you can just go through and weld that up at the end. Here you can see we can do a flat pattern, export that to the manufacturing team, and they should have exactly what they need to cut that flat pattern and start rolling up that cone. So I hope that that helped to answer your question about how to set up a cone. But if you do have any additional questions, let me know down in the comments. Like I said before, I'm happy to make additional videos on this topic. I love sheet metal. In fact, I love it so much that I'm teaching a class on it a little later this month. And that class is going to be available online as well. So if you can't take it live with me, take a look down in the description. There will be a link there for the upcoming online version of that training class as well. And I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Be sure to hit the like button. Be sure to subscribe to the channel and be sure to come back for more SolidWorks Sheet Metal Quick Tips.